Hello everyone, this is Worldwave. Uh, seeing a lack of proper guidance on this subject on YouTube, and after many requests from my friends and colleagues, and because, well, I just love this module, I decided to make this video. I'd like to present to you my humble expert's guide for making awesome sounds with, and properly utilizing, the Chaos Devices Odessa Additive Oscillator. First, it's better if I go over what additive synthesis actually is. It plays on the theory that all sounds that you hear in nature are composed out of individual sine waves at different frequencies and amplitudes. What does that mean? Well, let me show you with a uh, face plan wavetable editor or basically any um, wavetable editor out there that has the capability to edit harmonics. If we go into the harmonic editor here, we'll be able to see individual harmonics that compose the sound. And the y-axis of this graph represents amplitude, and the x-axis of this graph represents harmonic order, like the order of the harmonic series. So if I click here and drag up or down, I can control the amplitude of each harmonic of the sound in relation to the fundamental. So this is a fundamental harmonic, the most bass frequency of the sound, and these are overtones that eventually, if I had enough of them, and like go for certain amplitudes and create a certain ratio of amplitudes and phases and you know different components of the sound, I'll be able to reach, theoretically, any sound. So, um, in, in essence, this is what this oscillator is doing. It, it is playing with a harmonic series, or just a cluster of harmonics uh, in a certain ratio, and and you will you are able to manipulate that ratio and create like different sounds out of manipulating clusters of harmonics in different ways. That's the short version of it, basically. Okay, so let's go over the panel and feature set. Odessa has 512 partials per voice. That means that. Uh, even if you generate bass instruments, you are still not capable of hearing the topmost overtones in the instrument um, because it's beyond human range of hearing. And that's because it works with individual harmonics and performs calculations rather than using audio files. This is a digital module, if that is not apparent at this point. Okay, so that's the quality. It has three outputs, uh, one of which is the fundamental and one is marked odd partials, and one is marked even partials. What does that mean? Um, each of these outputs, these two partials outputs, can contain different um, clusters of harmonics depending on what you select with these two knobs. Now we'll show you that later. The fundamental output usually uh, puts out a sine wave, and this is factory issue. Odessa ships with sine wave coming out of here, but it also has a jumper on the back that gives you the option to change this to a square wave. I would recommend changing it to a square wave. Why? Uh, because square waves are more functional and um, you can always filter out the redundant harmonics. To each their own, I recommend trying the square wave anyway. Just trying it, see if it's functional for you. Check the manual for this. This button here allows you to, to go into unison um, and there's a unison spread knob. Personally, I don't adore the unison algorithm in here. Um, it's, not, it's very phasey. And it also kind of reduces the amplitude. I'll, I'll touch on this subject later, but it kind of fights against the internal mixer um, so that the amplitude doesn't get too high. And eventually uh, you get kind of, kind of quiet sounds out of this when you use Unison, but you can compensate using uh, Overdrive. So let's just go over the layout again. Three outputs, fundamental, odd partials, even partials, right? knobs. The main big knob uh, allows you to control the amount of partials that you are working with. What does this mean? This is literally band limiting. When you turn it down, as you can see, this graph here is basically a fast Fourier transform of the sound that's coming out of the module. Um, each bulb, each LED, represents a certain range of, of, of frequencies, and uh, it's basically showing you kind of an EQ graph where when they get redder they are more harsh and when they are greener they're weaker. And if I if I turn this knob you will see that I start to cut into the sound very very harshly. Uh, it, it's just literally band limiting those those um, those harmonics, just removing them from the mix. Let me show you what that sounds like. 
I plugged my Odessa into the mixer to make it a little bit uh, comfier to listen to. I'll just turn it down a little bit. And also turn down the spectral tilt, and I'll explain about this one later. I'll turn down the partials knob to show you exactly what it does. As you can see on the graph to the right, harmonics are literally being cut in and out as I move this knob. And they're also being cut out um, instantly. These two knobs control coarse and fine tuning, so... I don't know if Chaos Devices likes to talk about this, but usually these knobs are tuned very well. Like, each one of these lines represents a, an, an octave. Okay, so after these knobs, the other main knob is the Spectral Tilt knob. So this knob controls a spectral tilt shelf on all the frequencies of the sound. So when I turn it to the right, um, it, it basically accentuates all the high frequencies. And when I turn it lower, it removes them gradually. And if I turn it all the way down, it kind of sounds like a low-pass filter as it turns them down completely. Eventually, we're left with nothing but the fundamental. It's pretty useful if you don't have a low-pass filter and that's all you plan to work with. I would say this is pretty nice, but you will requ require a VCA to completely su shut down the, the fundamental frequency. But also, here's how you generate a sine wave. Turn this down all the way, or turn the band limit down all the way. Then you get a pure sine wave. Okay, and if you turn this all the way to the right, you get very harsh sawtooth, high-pass sawtooth kind of sound, and that's because what happens is there is an internal mixer in here that, that uh, ensures that the frequencies, that the sounds that are coming out are not overly harsh or like clipping the internal uh, output because there are so many partials involved. So basically there is internal gain calculation being done. So when you increase the spectral tilt, higher frequencies are, higher frequencies are accentuated and this lowers the lower frequencies in return. Think of this knob kind of as a, as, a, um, as a pitch tracking equalizer, as well as a filter. But basically it's a pitch tracking equalizer, which introduces no latency or phase differences in the sound, which is vitally important to how this module sounds. Moving on to the next big section here, um, this, these three knobs control a comb-like response, where this knob controls the shape of the response, this knob controls the position of the, the comb, or phaser, or I'll let you hear it and you decide what to call it. And this knob controls how the Q value, basically how harsh it is. Is it, it does it, does it cut deep, or does it just cut, cut individual um, harmonics out? This comb will remind you of Harmer's phaser, if you know that uh, synthesizer. But let me just play with it a little bit to show you what it sounds like. And then when I change the warp knob a little bit, that was the density knob, by the way. If I change the warp knob a little bit, then play with the density, you will see that the shape of the response is different. Also a cool thing to try is to put the density knob somewhere and then change the warp knob to see what that does to your sound. Basically, um, the warp knob reintroduces the same comb response over and over again as you keep going. So if I do this... You will see that it goes up and down and up and down. And the farther I go with the warp knob, you will see that the same response goes up, down, up, down, again, 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 and again. See? Basically, it, it multiplies this response over and over again. It creates very interesting movements in the, in the upper harmonics, which is nice to create bases with, and I'll show you how to do cool stuff with this later. Um, you can create really insane movements with this. 
And basically the third one acts as kind of a balance, so if I feel like this is too harsh, I can, I can make it a little bit easier on the sound by decreasing the amount of peaking applied. So as you can see, it, it accentuates the harmonics at the edges of those notches. Um, and if I turn it up, it removes more harmonics uh, at the edges of, the, of, the, of those notches. So it, it makes the notches deeper and harsher. Okay, so the default position of this is like this. The peaking is in the middle, the density is down all the way, and warp is down all the way. By the way, this is the default position for the module in general. The tension knob is in the center, spectral tilt is in the center, and then the module is letting out a clean sawtooth. Uh, this is what Cast Devices calls the default. So moving on. The next main section is these two knobs. This knob selects the groups of harmonics that come out of each of these two outputs. Um, when it's in the center, an exact copy appears on both outputs. The same waveform appears on both outputs, and that waveform contains even and odd harmonics. When you move it to the left, you will see that the odd partials output contains only odd partials, as you can see in the graph up there, and the waveform looks kind of square, so let me even it out using the spectral tilt. You have kind of a square wave here. If you continue to push it, you will see that it moves on to creating odd groups of two partials, and then odd groups of three partials, and then odd groups of four partials, and so on, until it becomes odd groups of eight partials. And if we move on to the other output, you will see that it creates, it, it generates the adjacent groups of partials. What's important to realize between these two outputs is that this one creates a separation between the fundamental, um, I'll show you with my cursor, this output creates a separation between the fundamental and the frequencies above, generating more square-like behavior, and this output doesn't do that separation. And the waveform that comes out of here is visibly more saw-like in behavior. And if I return the bank knob to normal, it resumes behaving like a normal sawtooth. Fundamental output, obviously. Clean square wave. Sorry if that was loud. Um, okay, so back to the odd partials. Um, the next knob in this section is the harmonic factor. What it does is, depending on the direction, right, when you turn the bank knob to the left, it behaves as these labels show, but when you turn it to the right, it flips these outputs, so this output will show you even partials instead of odd partials. Um, it flips the behavior when you go uh, in different directions with the bank knob. And it also fl flips the behavior of this knob here. So when you turn this to the right, the right output will be affected by the harmonic cluster knob, and I'll show what that does later. And when you flip it to the left, the left output is affected. So just remember, when this points to the left, this one affects the left, and when this points to the right, this one affects the right side. What does it do? Um, basically, let me just go somewhere with this. The harmonic cluster knob shifts all of the overtones up as if their fundamental has shifted up in the harmonic series. So, right is multiply and left is divide. If I do, if I go to one half, all of the harmonics here are now behaving as if the fundamental is an octave lower. And if I go to one third, it's as if it's as if the fundamental is a third of the frequency of the original fundamental, and so on. Eventually, it starts folding down and generating quite noisy behavior. And when you go to the right, it goes up. This is as if the fundamental was an octave higher, and so on. It can get pretty high. So already you can see that these two knobs are the source of like lots of awesome behavior in this module. 
The amount of variance you can get from here is insane, and if you LFO them, you can get some pretty glitchy, awesome digital sounds. So that's the bank knob and harmonic cluster knob. The tension knob, uh, what it does basically is it changes the formula of the harmonic series that is being generated. So if I shift it to the right, all of the harmonics are shifted by a different ratio from the original harmonic series. Until you get these like very metallic kind of sounds. There's a dead zone in the middle, so you can go back to normal harmonic series, and then if you go left, it kind of tightens them down. The interesting part here is that the upper harmonics are folded down so fast that they can reach beyond the fundamental, and this will generate noise as they start to go below the fundamental and clash with it. Eventually you will get these like noisy waveforms. So these are nice these sound kind of woody, still a little bit metallic, but very strange sounds indeed. Like I don't I don't use this knob a lot, but it's definitely a source of lots of bell like behavior without using FM. Alright, proceeding to the next the bottom section and the spread knob. Um, this button controls the amount of voices. So green is one voice, orange is three voices, and red is five voices. Um, those voices are at first they're stacked, so that means uh, that you can use you can use this button to generate unison, but also you can use this button to enable additional voices when you have the hell expander. Input additional one volt per octave um, connections to just get more basically polyphony out of here. Also something important to remember here is that um, when you click this button, when you press this button, it resets the phases, and I will explain what that does later. So when you go to any number of unison voices, you can increase the spread knob to detune those voices. As you can see, it creates the super saw effect when you're using a sawtooth, but you can get lots of sounds out of this. Personally, I don't adore the unison algorithm in this because it doesn't randomize the phases, but you can do that yourself. If you touch the tension knob, it screws up the phases. And when you move it around, it resets those, the, it, it screws them up again every time. So let me just reset this to normal so you can understand. You can click the button to reset the phases again. When I touch the tension knob, it disperses the phases of each harmonic in relation to the fundamental. And this creates really nice sounding waveforms for bass instruments. When you go high, you don't hear this difference. But when you go low, let me reset them again. Just click it three times and go back to green. If I go low, and then I move this tension knob, you can instantly hear the difference that it does. To those familiar with kilohertz plugins, this sounds like Disperser. So the trick to do that is to turn the tension knob up and then back down to the dead zone to disperse the phases. And if you want to reset this, click the button, and then it resets the phases again. So pretty nice. And if you want to generate clean unison voices with random phases, you can do that by separating the spread knob and then moving the tension knob a little bit to disperse the phases and turn it back to normal. Obviously, as you can see, when you use unison, it kind of screws up the uh, the amplitude, because again, you have five voices with 2500 partials fighting against the internal mixer for amplitude. So it's turning them down, it's doing kind of a, a strange... Uh, I have yet to comprehend exactly what's going on with the internal mixer here, but um, to maintain this battle against it, you have to use the spectral tilt knob, you have to use the fundamental output, and you have to use external 
modules such as uh, VCAs to increase the gain, overdrive the signal, or distort it, or, you know, we've talked about the outputs. Uh, let's talk about the inputs. This input here is a exponential FM input. Um, this is not through zero. The regular analog style exponential FM, let me put something into the input. It's very, very harsh. It goes very, very deep. I'll turn it down. I'll turn down the octaves on this a little bit. Obviously, because this is a digital module, it responds um, in different ways to FM than analog modules. But as long as you don't go too high with the modulator, you can get some pretty cool sounds out of this alone. And because you can get the square output out of here, you can sync external oscillators to this, which is also pretty nice. So that's the exponential FM input. Here you have the standard issue uh, volt per octave input right here. This input controls the spread knob, so unison spread here. This input, con this input is linear FM with an, with an attenuator. This input is through zero, which is nice. Let me show you. So let me plug the the waveform that's coming out of Platts here. This is a NIT. It's just a custom Platts, basically. Um, and I will put it into here. And you will see that it has a linear response that is extremely deep, but it's also through zero. So this input controls this tension knob. It's kind of unclear, but this input controls this tension knob. And if I, I'll just get a quick LFO from here, a unipolar sawtooth LFO from here. I'll plug it into each input to show you what that sounds like. Also, you can put negative voltages in here, and the knob accepts them and goes down. And this input controls the partials input, so if I plug this into here... Right? And this input controls this knob, the spectral tilt knob. Five volts cover this entire range. So that's that. The density input has an attenuator here, lucky for us, uh, because this knob generates tons of microscopic movements, and if you catch those sweet spots, you can generate like really awesome sounds. So this attenuator is vitally important. And the warp input has an attenuator as well, controls this knob here. So this one controls this knob, and this one controls this knob. And this input controls the peaking. Okay, so now that we covered the panel, I want to give you an important tip here. Um, because of the way this knob behaves with the different outputs, and because each of these outputs contain uh, different waveforms which are a subset of the same waveform, and this uh, output is completely in sync with these, there is a relationship created here which can enable you to create awesome sounds by combining these outputs. So here's an example. Let me get another cable here. And I'll take one output, put it in here, and I'll take the out the other output on a separate channel and pan them out from each other. 
Also, let me re reset the phases. Right, so now we have a sawtooth, just a sawtooth coming in on the left and the right channel, so it sounds mono. But if I move this bank knob, this odd partials output will contain odd partials, and this even partials output will contain even partials. Let me do that. Now you'll notice that each side contains a different waveform. And this is quite interesting because this is fully stereo and if I then go to five voices for example I can have stereo unison spread with phase dispersion in Eurorack You can create these buzzing, really busy sounds. Really harmonically rich sounds. And then, when you move this knob, it creates different waveforms on each side. So, yeah. I wouldn't recommend for stereo applications using this knob. It creates a difference in the harmonics on one side and that kind of breaks the stereo. But yes, this module is great for stereo applications. It is, I would call this a stereo oscillator just because of this capability, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to work with in stereo applications to make like fat bases and stuff like that. Another cool thing to understand is that each of these outputs can contain different waveforms. So if I just mute the right channel here and go to mono and I'll just take the left odd partials output I can just create these like insanely complex it's cool to think about Odessa as like a complex oscillator with like really really nice like wave shaping capabilities where I can go like this get the peaking over here find a sweet spot with the density knob bring some more highs into the mix with spectral, spectral tilt and then play with the harmonics that are in there. Maybe I'll add some through zero FM into the mix. generate really awesome waveforms with this thing. If I add some FM into the mix, I can make these really growly boys. It's also important to remember that when you are when you're using FM, um, some of the some of the harmonics get pushed into megahertz ranges when this knob is too high so they get aliased out they get removed by the anti-aliasing filter so if you turn if you go with extreme fm applications it's important to turn this knob down a little bit because some of the changes done here are not going to be audible as you can see we the moment we introduce fm to the mix um the harmonics are blasting past the mic with blasting past 20 kilohertz and it becomes pointless to use these additional harmonics as they just create aliasing. So if you go to high values of FM, when you turn this down, you will notice that there's a certain point where it, it's unnoticeable that you turned it down. And when I turn it up a little bit, it starts affecting the other harmonics down in the frequency range. So it's important to find this like balance when you're using FM to not blast past the mic list and still utilize the, the, the harmonics that are still audible um, in the best way possible. This is just a kind of, kind of a sound design tip. So let me uh, take this out of here for a moment. Here's another cool um, position. When peaking is set all the way to the right and warp is set all the way to the right, you get very extreme phase responses. 
and there's a certain point in the density knob between two and between one and two, I think, where if you move it very slightly, you get these kind of format frequency behavior. And if I take the even partials out, but now we're, now we're in stereo. We'll split them a little bit. You get these two independent, like, cool outputs with format behavior. Now, before I get into some advanced techniques, I'd like to recommend some combo modules. One good recommendation I have is any stereo distortion. I personally either overdrive my IntelliGel Quad VCA, or I have a Ritual Electronics Guillotine, which is a nice distortion in 1U format. I also recommend uh, any um, dirty style filters, for example, uh, IntelliGel Morgasmatron that can go from clean to dirty, or SSF Stereo Dipole, or um, Meek Noise QPOS is also an interesting and cool choice uh, to go with. Um, these are all very nice combos uh, to accentuate the intensely complex high frequencies that are going out, going out of these outputs here. This module can definitely make a synth be more than the sum of its parts. Um, when it's combined with other modules that help help accentuate its strong points. So I'm going to go ahead and make some complex patches now to show you an example. Okay, so a simple freezer-based patch. I have my Odessa plugged into a VC8 into a filter here. I'm going to take the second output into the VCA. So both of these outputs are going into the filter and into my mixer. Hard pan left and right. Out of the VCA, it's coming into the filter in band reject mode, so it's basically just two notches moving around. And I'm going to use uh, these notches as well as modulations from inside Odessa um, to generate like these cool phaser kind of like neuro basses. And I'm just going to show you what that sounds like. then I'm going to take these multiplier cables. I have two random outputs coming out of this uh, stages. Just random sample hold with slew. And those are controlling uh, notches that are moving in the filter. I'm going to use this multiplication to unify uh, the movement of that with the movement of the phaser. I'm going to combine those two and I'm going to use it to move the density knob. So now um, let me accentuate the highs with spectral tilt. Just a little bit. And as you can see, because we accentuated the highs, we also lost a little bit of lows. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use the fundamental output that's coming out of the bottom, uh, the Odessa. This, that is a square wave. I'm going to take that into a, a low pass, and I'm going to just low pass the square wave so that we only have fundamental coming out, like almost the fundamental, just a little bit of, of added like juice, uh, squarey juice. And I'm just going to literally take the stereo from the filter, uh, take the high, fr the high portion of this sound, I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to mix it with the fundamental output. I have additional bass now. Yeah, I would also recommend including a mixer with Odessa so you can really balance out the bases that you're making. Now let's add some phase dispersion spice on top. Okay, now I'm going to push the density knob and explore what I can do with a comb filter to add um, some a little, little bit more spice here. I like this spot right here. Let's see what the warp knob does.
also important to uh, to note is that the density knob affects both outputs um, in stereo configurations. This means that this effect sounds mono, but it's not behaving as an effect. It's literally a pitch tracked um, calculation performed on the harmonics. So I found an interesting spot here. I'm just going to up the modulation I'm getting from the mix that I made. Now when I increase the warp it really drives it crazy, so I made this like really crazy phaser behavior. Now I'm going to use peaking to see where the sweet spot I like, where adding more of it, more of that phaser movement. I want to see what it does to the sound. By increasing the peaking knob I can add more of the phaser effect. And by by decreasing the peaking knob I can remove some of them some of the phaser effect and create sounds that are a little bit harsher and less clean. I kind of like this position here. Alright, so now to me the finishing touch is that I really want to get those high frequencies in there so I'm going to uh, take the output from the mixer now that we have kind of a finished sound I'm going to take the output from the mixer and do one of two things. I'm either going to saturate it by compressing it and crushing it with a compressor, or I'm going to distort it using distortion. Now I'll push the highs. Okay, so that's kind of a phaser bass. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay, so here, for example, I've created kind of a bellish sound, um, and I'm going to show you how to use the different parts of the panel to shape the sound to create like these really nice uh, bellish tones. So what I did in this case is I increased the tension slightly to push the harmonics a little bit up, and I'll show you exactly what that sounds like. So as you can see, there's a little bit of harmonic separation um, from the fundamental here. It's not following exactly the harmonic series anymore, and that's okay, because we're not trying to make something like that. We want to make a metallic-sounding bell sound. Right. And then I used um, the density, the comb filter section, I used it basically to create some notches and dents in the harmonics to increase, to, to make it just a little bit more interesting. I just tuned it in a certain way and found a certain setting, just like before I found a sweet spot that I felt that sounded nice, and I did that. I didn't use the bank um, controls at all, and I'm using... Um, I'm modulating the spectral tilt knob with an LFO that I really, uh, really attenuated down because the spectral tilt knob is extremely sensitive. And that creates that little vibrato effect. I also used a very exponential envelope coming into uh, Talon, which is a VCA. And um, it has a very low sustain point so that when it really pushes up, it, it distorts very hard. And that makes that little transient. Like, you don't even need FM for this. I uh, also put a little bit of the envelope towards into the linear FM input because it generates this pitch drop uh, that adds to the bellishness. And I add a little bit of reverb on top. make it a little bit more uh, fun. And now for my third example I'm going to show you uh, how to make like a, a, a mean 
growly kind of race sound, and that is very, very simple. Uh, just take the odd partials, move the bank knob one to the left. I'll take the output from this uh, VCA here. Tune the default position again. Reset the phases. Nice. I'm not going to make a classic race here, but I am going to make like a growly kind of thing. The trick in this case is to use the fundamental to amplitude modulate some noise on top of the bass aspect of the sound. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, plug this in here. And I'll just gonna I'm just gonna kind of speed through this to show you I'm using blue noise here. Okay, so here's what I did. Um, basically, I took the odd partials output, I made an interesting uh, configuration here where I turned the bank to the left just to get some odd harmonics out and make it squarish. Then I used the comb filter to apply an interesting position. Again, I turned just warp uh, way to the right and I shifted the density knob a little bit and just started playing with it until I found an interesting position. I went back to that like formante thing that I showed you earlier. And then I, I took a modulation out of Planner 2. I put that into... Okay, so here here's the signal route. Uh, odd partials going out of Odessa into a VCA. Getting mixed with blue noise coming from uh, Quantum Rainbow 2. That blue noise is being uh, ring modded by the fundamental. That's just being low-passed a little bit to generate less harsh movement. And then I just tuned the, 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 the amplitude modulation a little bit to make it less harsh. Um, so that what that creates is it layers the noise on top of the waveform. It sounds like this. And then I took the Planner 2 um, un bipolar Y output and I put it into a low pass. That The whole mixed signal is passing through this low pass. And then that low pass is just being moved up and down um, when I move the planner 2 knob just to control some highs and tune it down a little bit when the knob is low. Then out of that filter it goes back into the VCA where the, the sum of that signal is being uh, controlled post-filtering um, by the same modulation from planner 2. That VCA channel is going into a reverb a very, very slight, very small reverb, just to add some expansion onto the sound, just to add some space, roominess. Then out of here, I'm pushing all of that into very gentle distortion, and then out into the mixer. So when I push this knob, I get that. And I can do anything with this, I can just go ahead and move it like, with like an envelope or something. Like, then you can play within that space using the tools provided by the DES's com filter. So, in conclusion, this is an amazing module. I highly recommend using it, if only just to learn a lot about sound design. And um, I also highly recommend using additive synthesizers in general. They seem kind of intimidating at first because, I mean, it is it does require a little bit of of like a forward before you start using these uh, synthesizers. But I hope my video was a little bit of help. And then there's a lot of resources resources on YouTube, and a lot of insanely good sound designers out there that are willing to really give from their knowledge. And I think that's incredible. And uh, we are in a golden age of sound design, in my opinion, where people are making sound design Bible, like, common knowledge, and, uh, and like, just knowledge has never been more available than now. So I highly recommend 
are researching additive synthesis and exploring, and I highly recommend Odessa as well. It's an amazing module. It just never stops like throwing new things your way. Really, if you learn properly how to utilize the different features it gives you, you can squeeze some amazing sounds out of this module. It just requires a little bit of exploration and depth and finding the sweet spots and finding like use cases for what it supplies. Instead of rambling some more, um, I will just conclude this video. I really hope you enjoyed. I really hope you liked uh, what I had to show and you enjoyed the patches. I probably won't make some patch notes this time because I really winged these patches on the go. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't have them planned or anything. I just kind of went with the flow and saw what came out. Um, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you like my stuff, uh, subscribe to me. Follow me. Uh, follow me on SoundCloud. I have a lot of stuff coming soon. Um, and that's about it. Go to my Patreon. Check it out. And be inspired to explore sound design. We're so lucky to exist in this age where it's so easy to explore these spaces. So yeah, be inspired. Um, and good luck. If you have any questions, really uh, talk to me in the comments and I'll gladly answer.